Okay, so welcome all um, to this uh, summer review session. My name is Dr. Alex Fan. I'm the Executive Director for Student Success here in the Jacobs School. Um, so it's just a name and a face now, but I hope um, that in the next few years, I get a chance to meet and, and uh, get to know a lot of you here. All right, so when you uh, join uh, us here in fall, uh, feel free to um, set up an appointment, come by, knock on my doors. Uh, love to, to get to know you all and and I, I think for the you know you picked the best school, uh, and and I, I was a student here, undergrad, grad. Uh, I teach here, I do research here. Um, now I work with a lot of the wonderful Idea Center staff here to support our student success, um, and that's you know for you all. That's for this particular program. We we want to make sure the goal is to get everyone um, a strong head start with with math. Um, that's one of the the fundamental course for all engineering. Um, curriculum, and we want to make sure that you start um, where where um, it, it, the best class or the best course uh, that fit with your uh, your current uh, level of, of 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 preparation. So what that means is, if you have taken calculus in 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 high school, we want to make sure that you can place all the way up to calculus. Let's say if you haven't taken pre cal then we want to make sure that you um, uh, can review the material, do well, and get and and, and start out with, at at pre cal You know where wherever you at, right? We want to make sure that um, you you uh, do well on the test and you place in the appropriate class um, for for you. And and the goal is there is again the MPE is extremely important. The first math class is important. It's going to set the pace for the rest of the next four years. Um, and, and so you don't want to you don't want to get put into situations where um, your your aptitude should be placed at a higher level, but for whatever reasons, technical difficulty or um, you just didn't do well the first time around for whatever reason. We want to make sure that you you have all the resources you that you need to do to do well on this test and and set you up for success. Okay, um, so so uh, with with that, I uh, want to pass it over to our two wonderful tutor that would that would work with you all very closely this next two weeks. Uh, go over all the different material, the, the different topics that you you should be familiar with. Um, so you all uh, you know, treat this as as a a large study group. We all in it together. We all have a common goal of doing really well on the MPE. Uh, whether or not you're taking it for the first time or you uh, want to do some reviews so then you can do uh, better the, the, the second time. Um, okay, so uh, I'll, I'll pass it over to uh, Rishi. Why, why don't you start? Sure, sure. <clears throat> hey, guys. Uh, thanks for joining today. My name is Rishi. Uh, I'm a incoming fourth year in mechanical engineering. Uh, during the school years, I uh, teach topics such as uh, Math 18, uh, which is linear algebra to undergrads, and I've decided to do something that's a little bit different uh, than what I'm used to, which is going to be uh, this pre-calc with you guys. Um, and so, as Alex was saying, um, we just want to get you guys as prepared as possible, and so, um, you know, each and every day we're going to be uh, covering a lot of ground. I'm excited. It's going to be uh, a lot of different topics, a lot of fun, uh, and I'm looking forward to meeting all of you. Nick? All right. Good stuff. Isn't he so charming? God. Um, all right. My name's Nick. Uh, I'm also an ELC peer educator uh, for the Idea Center. I teach also mainly Math 18, Linear Algebra. Um, if you don't know what that is yet, that's okay. Um, I'm a big fan of math and teaching math and learning math. I have a math minor. Uh, I just graduated this past quarter. So this will be my last uh, foray into tutoring uh, for for undergrad stuff. Um, I'm excited. Uh, done a lot of prep. Uh, excited to switch it up. And yeah, excited to meet all you guys and get you all prepped. I'm sure you don't need to be told again that the where you get placed in math is is pretty important. Um, so hopefully you guys uh, come to the majority of these sections uh, and hopefully they're helpful because yeah, you, you wouldn't wanna get stuck behind in, in math. It, it would, it would kind of suck. <laughs> so yeah, all right, let's get into it.
Okay, so um, before you know, if I can borrow just a uh, just another a few minutes, uh, if that's okay, um, by a show of hand or by reactions, I guess, um, how many of you have taken the MPE? This is a question for the room, so just so we can gauge. How many uh, have signed up for it and planning to uh, take it uh, soon? All right. Uh, how many of you have not heard about the MPE tests before our communication? Okay, so it seemed like you've heard about it. Uh, you haven't taken the test. And some of you are planning to take it sometime soon. What about the rest of you all? Um, can you either just unmute and to share with us and or just put it in the chat really quick on what the plan is? Um, so we uh, we uh, we know how to best help you all. Okay, so it seemed like you all are planning to take it before July 31st. All right, good. Many of you are. Wonderful, wonderful. Great, good. Um, so you you all are in the right place. Um, so this review series is gonna go for two weeks. So this week and next week we have we gonna have nine sessions all together. And outside of that, Rishi and uh, Nick also have uh, office hours every day as well. Each one of them. Um, so pick your poison, right? Uh, you know we love to see you here, uh, and we're gonna go over a lot of a lot of different concept, a lot of problems. We solve them together. We might break it up into small groups. Um, just try to, you know, think of this, this cohort right here, right? Everyone is in here. I want to remind you all again, we're all in here with the same reason, right? You all about to take the MPE test and you all want to do, everyone want to do well on it. And we want to see you do well on it. Um, so we are here, we provide, um, all the resource that we have, uh, to you all. Um, hopefully it resonates with a lot of you. Uh, if you find out, uh, that there might be other ways, um, that we can help you better, please feel free to reach out. Um, and, and, and I have Sarah on here. So Sarah is our assistant director of the idea center. Uh, she, she can be a great point of contact and she can help make sure that you all have the resource that, that you need. Um, all right. So for, for, uh, by any chance of some of you who might not have heard about the MPE, uh, Rishi, is there a plan to quickly go over, um, the, the MPE website really quick? Um, or is that part of the plan? Because I don't want to. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, okay. First thing we're right, going to so do in, is. Yeah, if that's the yeah. case, I'll pass it over to you all. You know, okay. I just want to, um, you know, say, you know, you know, this, this, thank you for being here. It's great. I know it's during the summer. It's 2.30. Uh, a lot of us have better things to do. Uh, but hey, you know, uh, hopefully this is a great time uh, investment for you all. Okay. All right. Passing back to uh, Rishi and Nick. All right. Thank you, Alex. Uh, yeah, so the first thing uh, I want to do is kind of just generally give you an overview of what we're going to be doing. Uh, so the next two weeks are going to be fairly busy uh, and to cover as much material and kind of review um, all of these different topics that are going to be on the math placement exam. Um, we're going to have kind of two things going on. Uh, so the main thing that we're going to be doing is our worksheets, um, which I will go ahead and actually uh, share the document for you guys. Um, so let's see, we got our first document, uh, which you guys can all click on open. Uh, that's gonna be a worksheet, which is gonna be covering uh, linear equations and kind of the basics of you know finding slope, things like that. Uh, and it's gonna be the first thing we're gonna be uh, covering today. So on there, you're gonna see some explanations, some problems. Uh, Nick and I are gonna just go through that worksheet um, and and based on how you guys are feeling, we will try to cover uh, as much as as much as possible, but also make sure we really dive deeper into some of those you know, more, more challenging topics. Uh, so open that worksheet, take a look at it. Um, I would say if you have you know a pen, pencil and paper handy, um, you know go ahead and grab that uh, because the more you actually practice on your own for these topics, the easier the math placement exam is going to be for you. Uh, if you are someone who likes to work on an iPad, such as myself, uh, you can go ahead and copy that document to Notability, whatever it is. Yeah, Nick's got his iPad as well. Um, but you know, old school, new school, take your take your pick. Uh, the, the the main thing I want to encourage is that 
uh, you actually do get something that's going to allow you to work through these problems because uh, listening to us talking about math is going to be a little bit less effective than, you know, working through the problems. Uh, and it's going to be more fun for you guys too. Um, if, if you guys have any questions, by the way, at any point, feel free to, you know, use the raise hand feature. Uh, you guys, I'm sure had some, some zoom high school, uh, maybe, maybe three, three years ago now, but, uh, I'm sure you guys had like a little bit of, uh, zoom schooling in the past. So hopefully we're all familiar with zoom. Uh, so yeah, feel free to, you know, raise your hand, say something in chat if you have any, any questions, anything like that. Um, so that's the first thing is our worksheet. The second thing I'm going to do is uh, share my screen here and then show you guys our website. So this is our uh, pretty much our course website for the uh, math placement exam. It essentially breaks uh, what's going to be on that exam into six different topics. Um, so you have kind of linear equations. The second topic is rational numbers. Third equation is polynomials. But then we have uh, geometry, uh, functions, and then exponents. So uh, a wide range of pre-calculus topics. They don't necessarily um, have any particular order, but they do have subtopics within each of them. So you'll see we have under each of these six, to six topics, a few different modules, and then under each of those modules, we have lessons. Uh, and so our worksheets are going to closely follow uh, this, this kind of format that's on the website, right? So our first worksheet that I shared in the chat is linear equations and inequalities. Uh, Nick, do you have anything to add on to that so far? I think you're doing a great job, Rishi, me personally. I, I want to say that on this website is contained basically all the math you'll do from, you've probably done from middle school all the way up to all through high school. So if you are like a like interested in reviewing basically everything you've done this website is pretty great for that i mean I, basically everything you would need for the math placement exam is contained with examples videos like practice do it yourself uh type stuff all on this website so i highly recommend it uh if you are not uh feeling like you got enough practice with these sessions and the worksheets Awesome. And then, uh, Nick, actually, if you wanted to make a, a poll for Office Hours um, while I'm talking, uh, I think you can do that through Zoom. I might be sure. wrong. Sure. I'll have to do some learning and create. Yeah, that. yeah. Sure, sure, sure. Take your time. Um, but yeah, these are, uh, these are the modules you're going to be working with. The first thing I'm going to do uh, is ask you guys, uh, and, and I'll, I'll show you guys on the website what I'm talking about here. So the first part of, uh, actually... Well, what I'll what I'll generally say is just um if we could get a kind of like a like a heat check to ch to just generally gauge uh, how you guys are feeling on linear equations, I feel like that'd be a good place to start, right? We want to make this tailor -made, tailor made to you guys. Uh, we all have different experiences. We all went to different high schools, uh, and so I want to make sure that we all have um, uh, we can get a gauge of what your guys's background is. Uh, so what I'll do is say, hmm looking at our reactions here um if you could just give me a, a heart reaction if you're feeling really good uh about linear equations a thumbs up if you're feeling like pretty decent on linear equations uh and then the open mouth emoji if you're feeling uh a little bit less uh you know confident on linear equations that'll just kind of give us a quick little you know easy way to figure out how you guys are feeling and no shame, and you know, if you have the open open mouth emoji, the thumbs up emoji, we're all we're all just trying to learn here. Yeah, and feel free. Uh, I'm getting some also direct uh, responses. That's totally cool too. You know, keep it anonymous, uh, but that just kind of helps us gauge as well. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Cool. So based on that, uh, we're just going to kind of jump into it. Uh, does everyone have, well, okay. So one thing I'll say is with the cameras off, it's a little bit more difficult 
in order to like tell where you guys are at. So, you know, first day, first thing, you know, I get it. You guys are nervous. You don't want to turn on your cameras. Um, if you're feeling brave, go for it. Turn on your cameras. That's always appreciated. Uh, however, um, for now, I'll just ask you guys, give me a thumbs up if you're ready to go, ready to learn. Um, and DM me or, or, or Nick if you have a question, any, any hesitations before we start. All right, so thumbs up means, you know, you have paper or pencil, you're ready to learn, no questions. Thank you, Jonathan, for the camera, much appreciated. I'm sure you guys have uh, much more like professional backgrounds. I've got like my window open here. And then, yeah, uh, if you want to ask your question, go for it. And feel free to unmute if you if you do have that question. Or raise your hand or whatever it is. Uh, how will we record watch the recordings? Um, I believe there's a there is a plan uh, that's been talked about to to share the recordings with you guys. Um, what I'll say is actually I I personally don't know what that plan is yet. However, I can say that we do plan to share the answers to our worksheets with you guys. Uh, what we have is a Discord, and that's something you guys should all join. I know some of you guys already did, um, but we are gonna we'll share the link with that Discord with you guys just right now, um, and that'll have the solutions to the worksheets. And then Sarah's just now saying um, that they're going to be on YouTube, so you'll have both us talking, you're working through these problems. You'll also have like a more condensed version of just the written out solutions, uh, and so. There's that link for the Discord. We'll post the problems in there. We'll post the solutions in there. Uh, and that'll keep you guys on pace. Uh, however, I do recommend showing up, like not in person, but like, you know, synchronously uh, to this to this uh, Zoom. I think that's probably going to be the best uh, tool for you guys. All right. So Nick, if there's nothing else, do you want to take it away? I, I would very much, I would like nothing more than to take it away right awesome. now. Awesome. Uh, let me, I'd like to screen share on my iPad. Boom. Turn on do not, do not disturb for safety. Okay. Um, Hopefully this isn't too laggy. I know I've I've had some trouble with it being laggy when I share from an iPad before, but uh, it is what it is. All right. So let's get started from the very beginning. Uh, probably one of the first things that uh, you guys learned in algebra. Uh, we're going to start with just lines, slopes, equations of the lines. Uh, I mean, it's pretty fundamental to every chapter of math that you're going to learn. Uh, how do you draw a line? <laughs> well, the first thing is slope. So slope, we usually describe as the sort of direction of the line, uh, sometimes called the gradient, uh, sometimes the rate of change. And really all it is, is it's just the amount that something changes in the vertical direction over the amount that something changes in the horizontal direction, right? We usually call this uh, rise over run. And this is just a ratio, right? Uh, now, if this number is a larger number, uh, then that means that this ratio of rise over run, it means that the rise is much bigger than the run, right? So that is gonna correspond to something like this line right, where it's rising vertically very fast, it's not uh, going horizontally as fast, so it ends up being steeper. Uh, a negative slope, uh, which is also something that you're gonna see pretty often, uh, is any time you have something sloping downwards like this, right, where in this case, the rise is actually like a decline, right? We're going down, uh, so we have a negative change in y. So a negative change in y over a positive change in x uh, is going to give us this negative slope. Um, and 
I don't know how familiar you guys are with the delta symbol right here, this triangle. Uh, this just means, uh, delta means change. So the slope equation also represented like this pretty often, where you have the difference in the y coordinates here uh, between two points, which is the rise, like we mentioned, and the difference in the x coordinates, which we call the run. Uh, OK. Uh, and then if you want to calculate slope between any two points using this kind of method, um, you want to take, so if you have one point here, x1, y1, you want to calculate the slope to x2, y2, a different point. You can take the slope, which we often call m, and you take the difference in the two y coordinates, the difference in the two x coordinates, and that gives you the slope. And like I was saying, this is also often written as delta y over delta x. Okay, cool. So how do we actually uh, gain anything from this? So first of all, like we mentioned, you can kind of tell when a slope is positive or negative based on just appearance, right? Positive is gonna look like it's climbing and negative is gonna look like it's descending. Um, and some terminology about slope that's gonna actually manifest later when we do some practice problems um, is we can use slope to describe when lines are parallel or perpendicular to each other. Um, so two lines, which you're probably familiar with, are parallel when they go side by side and they would never ever intersect. Even if you drew them infinitely long, they'd always be side by side. Uh, we can represent this in terms of slope by saying that two lines that are parallel have the same slope, right? There's no difference in angle because if they were any differently angled, they would intersect somewhere. So they have the same slope. Um, if two lines have the same slope, but different signs, uh, then we can say they're perpendicular. Although I'm not sure if that's true. Is there, that might be incorrect because I seem to remember a perpendicular slope being the reciprocal uh, and flip sign. Rishi, do you remember that? Hmm. Um, between which two? Uh, between two perpendicular lines. Because mm -hmm. say for say for instance you have a line with slope two, yeah. Um, then I believe that the perpendicular slope should be minus one half. Yeah, the the negative inverse. Negative inverse. Yeah. So actually, yeah. this this I believe is an error. It should not be same in magnitude. So oh uh, yeah yeah well I, correct this yeah just uh two perpendicular lines have opposite sine slope and then inverse magnitude so whatever that number is of the slope you take the reciprocal of it. So if you had a slope that's 3 fourths, a perpendicular line is going to have a minus 4 thirds slope. OK. I was I was reading that something didn't look right. Um, hopefully that, that clears that up. OK, cool. So same slope parallel, and then uh, negative inverse slope perpendicular. OK. Uh, so to actually describe one particular line, 
we need, we can't just say the slope, right? Because there's infinitely many lines that have the same slope, right? If we want to really pinpoint one line we're trying to draw, we need another piece of information. And for us, this piece of information is the y-intercept. Um, now what we're doing here when we're graphing a line is we're describing the slope and where it intercepts the y-axis. Uh, so for instance, on this drawing, uh, the y-intercept here is positive one because the line crosses that at one. Uh, the way you can solve for this, um, you know that since it's a y-intercept, then the x-coordinate should be zero at this point, right? So if you're trying to find a y-intercept, a lot of the times you can just plug in zero for x, and whatever y-value you get is uh, the y-intercept. Um, yeah. So yeah, when we're, when we're actually solving for the lines, you need to get the slope and you need to get the y-intercept. Uh, a lot of the times you'll get the slope if you're given two points, you can find the slope between them and then using the slope and using one of the points, you can plug in x equals zero and get the y-intercept. Okay. Uh, a special case of lines is if you have a straight line or a constant line. Uh, this is referring to any time you have, for example, here, the way we would describe this blue horizontal line is y equals three. And this is the collection of all points with a y coordinate of three. So, you know, minus two, three, is on there and minus four, three is on there, anything with the three in that second entry. Uh, and then the same thing with a vertical line, it's describing a constant X coordinate where any Y coordinate is valid as long as it's X equals two uh, falls on this line. Okay, cool. Uh, there's a couple common ways we represent lines. Uh, the most common one, as I'm sure you've all been, uh, had beaten into your heads over the course of the years, uh, the slope intercept form, um, named because we use the slope and we use the y intercept to describe it. Uh, here we have m as the slope that we found earlier, uh, and then y equals m times x plus b. Um, so that is the most common one. Uh, and then once you solve for the slope, you solve for B by entering any coordinate into X and Y and solving for what B must be. Uh, point slope uh, is a way we can describe lines if we have the slope, but we don't wanna go do the extra step of finding the Y intercept. Uh, and here we can do this just with the slope and any, any arbitrary point that we know falls on the line. So here x1, y1 are the coordinates of some point on the line uh, and m is the slope. And here you could plug in any x coordinate and you could solve for the corresponding y on that line. And then finally, the last form that we, I don't think we use a lot in terms of actually solving until we get to something like math 18, <laughs> uh, linear algebra, uh, is the standard form where we have just a times x plus b times y equals some constant c. Uh, now, the reason we don't really like this when we're graphing and messing around with stuff like graphs uh, is you can't really gain a lot of information just by looking at the standard form of a line. Um, it's much more clear what's going on in slope intercept form and point slope form. Standard form is a lot better for doing things like linear algebra and yeah, you may be asked to put lines in standard form, but it's less convenient for sure. Um, but to get to standard form, you usually do that by algebraically manipulating one of the other two forms into standard form. So usually you'll end up finding one of the other two 
for that one anyway. Okay. So that is all the content in the first module of uh, linear equations. Um, the format we're going to try and keep for the most part for these uh, sections is we're going to do a quick overview of all the content in a section. And then we're going to do some practice problems uh, sort of together. We'll run through it up here. And hopefully that will sort of reinforce some of the stuff we just talked about. Um, and then at the very end of the worksheet, when we've covered all the contents from a particular, you know, overarching topic, then we'll have some practice problems that you'll have some time to work through. Um, and hopefully those should be an uh, opportunity for you guys to sort of reinforce some of the topics we've covered and get some practice on your own, uh, test your own knowledge and, and see kind of where we're at. Okay, so we'll do our first examples uh, where we first just wanna test, can we actually calculate the slope between two points? Can we put our money where our mouth is? So recall that the way that we calculate slope is that rise over run. So we wanna find the difference in Y coordinate over the distant difference in X coordinate between these two points. We do that by on the numerator, subtracting the Y coordinates of the two points. So here we have seven in the second point, one in the first point. And then in the denominator, we subtract the X coordinates. Now, this actually simplifies pretty nicely. We get six over one, so six. Um, and as you can see, it's a pretty large positive number, right? So if you picture what that looks like on the graph, it should be some steep increase. And we may even be able to see this four, seven, three, one, you can see in the time it takes it to go only one unit to the right, it goes six units up. So large positive slope. Okay. So here the answer is six. Now here, we're going to have the same thing. We're gonna subtract the Y coordinates on top, subtract the X coordinates on the bottom, here we have two over one or just two. And this is a smaller but still positive slope that comes from the fact that we're moving one to the right in the time it takes us to move two up. Okay, cool. All right. Um, we will keep moving to the next one, but feel free, by the way, to raise your hand, unmute a uh, message, uh, ask questions if you have them, um, so we don't just uh, breeze through something that people had trouble with. <laughs> um, okay. Now we're going to try and graph some equations, uh, sort of take the next step beyond finding the slope. And so we're going to try and interpret these equations into a graph. So we'll start with number one. We have, I like to start, if I'm gonna graph like this, with the y-intercept. Because the y-intercept essentially tells you immediately what one of the points in the graph is. If we plugged in x equals zero here, we would get, minus eight. So we know that the point zero minus eight should be on here. Now we know that one point, now we're gonna use the slope to find our second point. Now the slope here is three, right? Which means that it must go up three units in the time it takes it to go right one unit. So in the time it takes it to go right one unit, it goes up three units. So 
the second point should be here. Now we can draw, and I'm going to use the fact that <laughs> my iPad snaps it to a straight line. So I don't need to be a fantastic artist. And here is our line. All right. Looking good? Feeling good? We'll move to the next one. Uh, where we're going to do the same thing. We're going to start with the y-intercept. Here we have five. So we can go ahead and drop a five here. The slope is minus four over three, which means that in the time it takes it to go three units to the right, it goes down four units, right? It's negative, so it's going down instead of up. So actually, the point is going to be right there. OK. Then what you can do is just draw a line connecting those and call it a day. All right, we'll do one more. Y equals x minus 7. Y intercept is minus 7. So we can count. That should be right here. And here, the slope, uh, it doesn't have a coefficient, right? But that just means that we can interpret that the slope is 1. Y equals 1 times x minus 7. That means that we move 1 unit to the right and 1 unit up which puts another point here. Uh, whoa, what the heck? That's pretty crazy. All right, there we go. Okay, cool. So hopefully, uh, drop any questions you have in the chat. Hopefully that made sense. Hopefully these things are flooding back to you now. Uh, and now we're going to try and do the inverse. Easy. Love to hear it. All right, we'll do the inverse now. Where now we have an equation. Uh, now we're trying to get an equation from an existing line. Here we can do this by looking at where the intercept is. So there it is on that one. There it is on that one. There it is on that one. And we know that our expression y equals mx plus b, this b term is just going to be whatever that intercept is. This can be y equals mx minus 4. It's going to be y equals mx plus 1. It's going to be just y equals mx plus zero, I guess. OK, now we need to find the slope here. Uh, the easiest way to do this is just look for where the graph very nicely intersects the grid and use that. Um, it's maybe hard to use this point, right, and find the slope there. But it's much easier to use the fact that we have a nice whole number coordinate here. So we know that from this red point to this blue point, we traveled one to the right and two up, right? So here the slope is rise over run, two up over one to the right, which is two. And so the equation for this line, y equals 2x minus 4. OK, do the same thing over here. Here it seems like it very nicely intersects right here. Here, in the time it takes it to travel 4 to the right, it travels one unit down. 
So here our rise is actually negative one and our run is four. So minus one fourth is our slope. And so our equation y equals minus one fourth x plus one. Finally here we have a much nicer one. This one travels one unit right and one unit down meaning the slope is gonna be minus one over one, or just minus one. So the equation here is just y equals negative x. And those are our answers. Okay, cool. So, Last example we'll do before we jump into the next section is we we have two points here uh, that we may have to use our imagination, but it says they're connected by a line. Um, and we want to find the equation of the line in standard form. So first off, I'm a visual learner. I'll draw the line between them. No, I won't. There it is. And a little bit, okay. Uh, so that's our line. We want to write the equation of this line in standard form. Uh, so like I said earlier, if we wanna put it in standard form, the first thing we're probably gonna wanna do is put it in a different one of our known forms. Um, in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and put it in, cause we haven't gotten much practice with it. I'll put it in point slope form and then we'll try and rearrange it in the standard form. Okay, so for point slope form, we need a point on the line and the slope of the line to represent it. Uh, now, a point on the line, uh, I mean, let's go ahead and actually look at what these points are first. So this guy up top here looks like he's minus 2, 18. That's his coordinate. This one right here, it looks like that is four, six. So for our point, we can just go ahead and choose four, six. It doesn't really matter. Now to calculate the slope, which we also need, we can do rise over run. So here we can have six minus 18 over four minus minus two. This is gonna equal minus 12 over six or negative two. Okay, and that seems plausible just by looking at it. Okay, so that means that the actual equation of our line is going to be y minus six equals, oops, excuse me, minus two times x minus four. Now to put it in standard form, remember we just need to have something x plus something y equals a constant. So let's get all of our constants together and all of our uh, variables together. So here we have y, equals minus two X, this is plus eight, this is plus six. We slide the six over to the other side and I distributed the minus two to the minus four to get eight. Now I will go ahead and move the two X over to the other side and combine here. And in the end, we get this Y plus two X equals 14, which is the standard form 
of the line. Something x plus something y equals a constant. Okay. Cool. All right. Any questions on anything we did uh, in this first section? The step after minus two? Yeah, so, uh, sorry, I kind of skipped ahead. So the standard form of a line, or sorry, not the standard form, the point slope form of a line looks like this. Where x1 and y1 are the coordinates of some point on the line, and m is the slope of the line. And so we chose the point 4, 6. We found our slope, and then we just plugged in all of the numbers uh, that we chose and found into that expression. And so that's how we got uh, to this equation. And then from there, we just wanted to put it in standard form by getting all the x's and y's on one side and all the constants on the other side. Okay. All right, in the interest of time, because we still have uh, much to cover, uh, I'm gonna s switch it over to Rishi. Awesome, Let's thank you, through. Nick. Good stuff, good stuff. Um, starting the ball, or uh, starting off strong, I suppose. I don't know if there's a, is there a metaphor for starting with a ball in a good way? I don't think so. Starting off strong, um, cool. Nick, one thing I'll ask you to do, two things actually, is um, in the meantime, since you're host, could you, I don't think I can create polls. So if you could create a poll um, in terms of just for everyone here, um, how how is everyone feeling for the six different topics and then also your office hours poll? Yeah, I'm trying to create polls. I've had, some, I can't really figure out how, I'll be honest. Uh... Okay. No, no worries. Yeah, if you, I don't if see you can't, the, I'm sure we can option. figure. Hmm, okay, I'm sure we can figure something else out. But um, okay, no worries, no worries. Yeah, so I mean, uh, good stuff with good good start with linear um, linear algebra or or rather just linear equations. But um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of different topics, and so before we get even further, because that was that's a good good start. I just want to say, kind of as like a disclaimer, uh, we are going to be doing. Uh, generally one to two topic, or we're going to be spending one to two days on each topic. Uh, so I know there's people wondering like, oh, well, what are you going to be doing over the next two weeks? And so I just wanted to let you guys know, um, you can expect some something like this, like this sort of same format uh, for all six topics. Uh, however, I know all six topics, you might have different strengths and weaknesses, which is why uh, we're going to try to create some sort of poll uh, or other way of like measuring how you guys are feeling on these uh, other topics like, you know, geometry or, or um, polynomials, things like that. Um, and so if you uh, feel strongly about linear equations, you know, we won't take offense if you, if you, you know, you want to attend the the session today, but you, you, you know, you might be doing something else in the background or whatever. That's, that's fine. You know, we, we've all been there. We're also students, uh, Nick and I, um, or at least he was until uh, a month ago. And he's going to be continuing next year, so he's still a student. Uh, we we get it, right? If you're if you have if you're confident about something, you know you think this is easy, um, you know you can focus more on other sections. Um, and so we're going to be going through those sections, and uh, in generally the same order as the website. Uh, we don't mind switching around if you know if you want to come to office hours. That's a great place to ask a a, a question about a different topic than the one that we're covering in the session. Um, another thing I want to say, sorry, these are all just things I was thinking about when, um, you know, Nick was, uh, talking it was just, uh, office, uh, office hours. Um, I do want to mention that I, I'll be having my office hours after the section every day. So if you guys ever have questions, there's going to be uh, a zoom link that you guys have already gotten. Uh, we can also hop on, on the discord. If you guys, uh, you know, shoot me a message, whichever one works easiest, either zoom or discord, um, we, I'll be having my office hours after the section every day uh, if you have any like last, you know, burning questions. So 
um, yeah, office hours can also be a good tool. Um, I know there's also people in our Discord uh, while Nick was talking just about the uh, MPE exam in general. I just want to address those now because, um, you know, it's towards the beginning of the, this two week section, this two week period. Um, pretty much people were asking, hey, like, what's the MPE like? And so what I'll say to that is um, it's nothing, it's not going to be super uh, deep and um, like complicated about any particular topic. However, it is going to cover a wide variety of topics, right? It's going to have those six different topics, which aren't necessarily related to each other in a, in a very um, meaningful way. And so I would say my, my, my first piece of advice to you guys is, you know, try to attend as many of these sessions as you can and try to work through as many of the problems uh, with Nick and I as we go through. And then you'll be in good shape for, you know, prepping your brain to like know how to do geometry. Maybe you, you took it a while ago or you forgot. Uh, and then maybe there's polynomials, which you learned recently, but you're still learning about them uh, and will kind of help further your knowledge on that. So yeah, uh, continuing on, uh, let's start with uh, the second module, right? Um, first things first, uh, I do also want to, oh, yeah, first things first is I'm, I'm going to share my screen with my, my own iPad. So I think, Nick, I don't know if you have to, okay, perfect. Share my screen. Start projects. Cool. Should be should be seeing that. And if you guys ever have any like issues or, or trouble accessing this worksheet, um, please let us know because. It's hard to work through if you don't have the problems. So just as a, in a brief, in a few words, the second module, uh, linear two, is talking about absolute values and inequalities. Those are pretty much the two things we're going to be talking about. So pretty much um, an inequality is when rather than an equal sign in an equation, you've got a greater than or less than sign or sometimes greater than or equals to or less than or equals to. Uh, and then absolute value is the absolute distance away from zero of a number. So here, here you can kind of see um, inequalities. So the way these are read is this one would be negative three x is greater than four, uh, which could become x is less than negative four thirds. So one rule you have to remember is that when you multiply or divide by negative number, when you're solving for x in, in an equation with equal inequalities, you have to flip the sign of the inequality, right? So this greater than sign becomes a less than sign. Oh God, I don't like that I can I can see my own picture on the screen when I'm writing on the side. So I'm just gonna slide that over. Um, the other thing is absolute values. And so absolute value signs are the distance away from zero, which means it's always gonna be positive, right? So the absolute value of a number is always gonna be the positive distance of a number away from zero. Uh, essentially, Positive numbers will stay positive and negative numbers will become positive if you take their absolute value. So if you have the absolute value of x equals five, x can be negative five or five because both of those two values have a distance away from zero of five. Uh, there's there's some, uh, some more explanations here, uh, which, which you can feel free to do, but I, I'm just going to go jump into some examples. We can kind of work in these rules as we go. Um, the main thing with absolute value signs, as you might guess, is since you uh, are now multiplying the number of answers, you might have like multiple different or multiple different equations. You might have multiple different answers. Uh, 
which we can see over here. So if we have absolute values and inequalities, rather than just having one set of solutions, right? Over here, we, we would have all the solutions that are greater than three. We would now multiply that and we'd have two sets of the solutions. And so this whole module kind of deals with how we can expand from just an equal sign to uh, much larger solution sets. As I said, I kind of wanted to just jump into the problems here for now. So linear 2.1, uh, just as a kind of a, a naming convention so everyone's aware, uh, 2.1 is always going to refer to, this is going to be module 2, and this is going to be lesson 1. So if you were to go over to our website, uh, what you do is click on linear and then click on the second module and click on the first lesson under that module if you wanted to see more problems like this or if you wanted to learn uh, pretty much the basics of this problem. And you'll see that sometimes we won't cover every single lesson, right? Uh, Nick did the first module and I'm doing a second module. And so we will cover each module during the next two weeks, but we're not going to cover any individual, every individual lesson. And so uh, I do recommend you go on that website. The, the one that Nick sent in the chat, which we can we can send that in the Discord as well. Cool. If there's not any questions, I'm going to go ahead and jump into this first problem here. So number one, and Nick, please uh, let me know if anyone has a, has a brain question, because I'm not always going to be able to see all the responses and stuff. Um, so yeah, linear 2.1. Problem one, uh, this is kind of a basic example of uh, how we can have an absolute value sign when we have an equation as well. And so number one, we have two, the absolute value of two X minus seven plus three equals eight. We can simplify that to be two X minus seven, the absolute value of that uh, equals five by subtracting three from both sides. Then we know that 2x minus 7, the absolute value of that must be 5. Therefore, there's going to be two possibilities, right? We have uh, either 2x minus 7 equals negative 5 or 2x minus 7 equals 5, right? Because that absolute value sign will make it so that it doesn't really matter what the sign of what's inside the absolute value is. It just matters that it's equal to 5 or negative 5. And so from there, we can do a little bit, a little bit of algebra with both of these. So 2x equals 12, therefore x equals 6. And then 2x equals 2, therefore x, oh, x equals 1. Any questions with that first one? All right. And so that's kind of the, the first type of problem that we have. I can do another one just to, you know, keep going with uh, the same topic, really hammered in. Uh, number two, actually I'll do, a, I'll do number three. It's a little bit more interesting, you know, it looks, looks a little bit different. So number three, we have two minus the absolute value of two plus, or x plus two, equals negative seven. And so first step is always just going to be to isolate the absolute value or whatever has an x in it and then get rid of any any numbers that are by themselves, right? So this two and this negative seven, they're both pretty simple. Uh, they're normal numbers, you know, there's no x's or absolute values. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add to the abs I'm going to add the absolute value of x plus two to both sides. And I'm going to add seven to both sides. Right, so I'm going to get rid of the 7 by adding 7 and adding 7. And then I'm going to add the absolute value of x plus 2. I'm going to add the absolute value of x plus 2. Right, so whatever you do on the left side, you have to do it to the right side. And that's going to leave me with, let's see, 9 on the left, right? We're just going to take this 2 and add it to the 7. And then these two are going to cancel out. 
And then these two are going to cancel out. So we're going to get 9 equals the absolute value of x plus 2. So it's a little bit more complicated than the last problem, but the final step is still the same. We're going to solve for two cases, one where the x plus 2 is equal to, uh, well, 9 or negative 9. So negative 9 equals x plus 2, and 9 equals x plus 2. All we got to do from there is solve for x. So subtract 2 from both of these equations. We'll get negative 11 and 7, which will be our answer. So I like to box my answers. Uh, it's usually a pretty good habit to make sure uh, you, you box your answers in general. I don't know if you guys did that in your high school, but uh, at UCSD, that's a pretty good habit to make and just kind of make sure the professor or the, the, the TAs for your class um, can clearly see what you did, right? Because you might get the answer wrong, you might get it right, but you wanna make sure you get credit where credit is due. So make things easy for yourself and box your answers. Cool. Uh, for the sake of time, uh, I want to jump into actually some breakout rooms for, for a few minutes here um, and look at 2.3. So scrolling down to 2.3, uh, you can, I don't know, maybe take a screenshot of this if you don't have the document open, but this is the problem we're going to be doing in breakout rooms. Uh, and so we're going to break you guys up into different groups. And what I want you guys to do is introduce yourself to your teammates. Um, and you can work individually or as a group, but at the very least, introduce yourself, you know, what, what your incoming uh, major is, um, you know, whatever other information you, you want to say, uh, and, and kind of ask each other questions and try to work through this problem. It's a pretty beefy problem, so don't stress about trying to finish the entire thing because we will be posting the solutions right after this, uh, but at least try to discuss how you attack this problem. Um, any questions before we jump out of, jump into breakout rooms? I'd like I'd like to add on that this problem is a little uh more abstract, I think, than some other uh problems that we've solved. Uh so don't stress too much about getting numerical answers. It's more just like uh see if you can sort of think through what the question is actually asking and how you can sort of visualize some of the uh some of the situations it's describing um yeah cool yeah so don't stress about getting like the actual numerical answer uh just try to main thing i want you guys to do is at least introduce yourselves to each other um that, yeah. that would be a win for me um and yeah i mean feel free to you know turn on your cameras hopefully if it's a smaller group then you might be inclined to do that but at least unmute and introduce introduce yourself um i'm just going to go ahead and create um about four breakout rooms here, because uh, there's about 20 of us. And then check the uh, wonderful solution that Nick wrote up for that problem, uh, which will be sent in the Discord, which, uh, speaking of which, we will send the Discord link again, just one more time. Please join that before you leave the Zoom today, uh, because if you don't, you're going to be missing out. Uh, but yeah, hopefully that problem went pretty well. Uh, what I'll ask you guys to do here is, yeah, we'll send that right now. Thank you. See, Nick's on it, dude. He's, he's just ready to go already sending the link, dude. Thank you. Cool. Uh, well, it is four o'clock, so we both really appreciate you guys coming. Um, see you guys again, same time tomorrow. Uh, and also I'll say my office hours, as I mentioned at the beginning are directly after this. So if you guys have any questions, um, I'm going to. See if I can just go ahead and uh, find the Zoom link real quick for those office hours.